2022 has been a year filled to the brim with amazing horror films. If anyone has ever doubted the state of the genre, we've collected 10 films to prove why horror is better this year than any other year in recent memory. Below, you will find 10 films from all over the world and from different studios. Some picks may even surprise you as well. There is something for everyone included here and you will likely be delighted to see your favorite included. Make sure to let us know which of these picks stand out as your favorite of the year and share all your feelings down in the comments below. Enough of this intro, let's talk about the 10 best horror movies of the year. Number 10, Werewolf by Night. Like many, I was surprised that Marvel Studios attempted an actual horror film this year. It was a letdown to see Sam Raimi explore the genre in fleeting moments with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and now more than ever, it feels like Marvel has potentially peaked. But Werewolf by Night surprised everyone by not only being one of Marvel's better projects this year, but also working as a near-perfect homage to classic horror. A group of monster hunters come together in a competition to see who can possess the powerful bloodstone. When it turns out one of the monster hunters is a monster himself, all hell breaks loose in a gory and artful horror feature. The black and white aesthetic helps not only hide the graphic violence from the censors, but brings you back to a time when universal horror was all the rage. Director Michael Cicchino added such a needed flair to the MCU and werewolf movies, both of which needed a desperate makeover by 2022. Number 9, Scream. Even with the legendary Wes Craven gone, it's still possible to make an entertaining Scream movie. As the year went on, I appreciated Scream 5, oddly titled just Scream, a bit more. Seeing other entries in popular long-running slasher franchises become polarizing messes or just ignored by the mainstream, you begin to see that Scream tried to bring back the life to this franchise. We focus on a new group of young stars this time, but the franchise favorites are still here to offer up all the goodies. David Arquette does much of the heavy lifting for the legacy characters, but Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox do not disappoint. But a special shout out to the new standouts like Melissa Barrara, Jenna Ortega, and Jack Quaid, all who captured the meta horror stylings of Scream so well. Radio Silence will never replace Wes Craven as the Masters of Slasher or even the Scream franchise, but they make a reasonable claim at the new modern horror crown. Number 8 Watcher. One of the Sundance Film Festival standouts, Watcher has rode its momentum all the way from its January preview to our early summer release. Written and directed by Chloe Okono, you must see this exciting and anxious feature as it depicts such a great and scary current mood. Yes, the film may lack any real twist or turns that you don't see coming, but you feel comfortable in the hands of the director who has a confident grip on the material. Aside from the stellar direction, lead actress Micah Monroe is the real reason to see this chilling film. Her work alongside her co-stars is superb, especially with her tense moments with Bern Gorman's terrifying Daniel Weber. Monroe plays a woman stalked by a dangerous man and seeing those around her turn up missing, yet no one seems to bat an eye at her fear. Watcher plays into those fears with a real Brian De Palma-like laser focus in an era where women are still unheard and often overlooked. Number 7 Smile. For what many thought was going to be one of the year's most straightforward and predictable horror experiences, Smile surprisingly took things up a notch. The film really tries to differentiate itself from its typical spooky jump scare filled peers. The scares here come at a cold and calculated pace, making you feel every haunt in it. And thankfully, we have a solid performance from lead actress Susie Bacon, who is slowly joining her father in an iconic horror status. Where Smile surprised most of us was at the box office, dominating the October season. Along with another entry on this list, it helped take a lot of steam out of Halloween Ends and cemented itself as this Halloween's must-see horror movie. With a budget of just $17 million, it's gone on to gross over $200 million worldwide, 
just in the states alone, it made nearly a hundred million, which shows the power of word of mouth and a hunger for some good fun scares. Smile gave Paramount another win this year alongside its horror sibling Scream and the ever so dominant Top Gun Maverick. If it's being looked at as a money maker or a scare giver, we saw true horror hit this year with Smile. Number 6. Sissy at the time of writing, Sissy is the best reviewed film on this list. It sits at a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes with a reasonable average audience score as well. While good reviews don't make a horror film great, it does show that Sissy made quite an impact upon its release. The director should be proud to turn this minor indie horror film into a true great moment for the genre. Sissy is one of the better horror films to capture this current generation. Once we meet our twisted characters, the slasher mayhem begins and you are invested in all of the twists. The film pokes fun at the social media influencers and wellness people and all those kind of things you would see on Instagram or Twitter, so you get a lot of commentary from the film, but it doesn't lack the absolute horror that we're craving. What makes this all work is watching our protagonist become truly triggered by the things around her, unleashing the film's twisted sense of humor, including some of the year's most brutal practical effects. Number 5. Mad God Every year, Shudder just pumps out some of the most stellar horror content you can find. From shocking films to musty television, you can rely on the horror streamer to provide some goodies. Let's take Mad God for an example. This year's experimental stop motion animated horror film feels like a fever dream, which is something filmmaker Phil Tippett wholly wanted from this experience. Produced over the span of 30 years, Mad God is not for the faint of heart. This is extreme horror by way of fantastic stop motion animation. You get a bit of David Cronenberg, Terry Gilliam, and Tim Burton from watching this, but Tippett's masterpiece still feels original. Original. As we follow the assassin down a hellish world descending via a diving bell, we see what six sights our filmmaker has to offer and you can see while this is just so perfect and why it took so damn long. Each layer of this hell that we see, we're shocked at what Tippett can conjure with his wild imagination and it again proves why this good kind of art takes some time. Number 4. Barbarian If you want to experience Barbarian properly, go into the piece with little to no knowledge. Even for this write-up, I'm worried about saying too much and spoiling all of the delightful twistedness. Many will feel like they know where this movie is heading, and the director knows that. Zach Kreger is fully aware that the first act is filled with a classic horror setup. You think you know where things are going, and the brilliance happen once we slam into that second act. Every little twist and turn works here. The shock factor constantly slaps you in the face over and over again, which is rare for dealing with fans who feel like they've seen it all. All credit goes to the director, but we have to shout out the incredible actors who brought this to life. Georgiana Campbell and Bill Skarsgård deserve all the credit for perfectly setting up and delivering everything we needed. Also, another special shout out to an actor who will be kept secret at this time. If you've seen the movie, you know this deliciously horrible person I'm talking about. And if you haven't seen it, prepare for the movie asshole of the year. The horror genre is all about doing new things but with a familiar formula. That's a perfect way to sum up Barbarian. This is something we recognize, but it still keeps itself fresh. Number three. Pearl and X. It doesn't seem fully fair to put these two together as they are very different films, but the Ty West doubleheader works so well as a pair. What one of them lacks, the other makes up for, giving X and its prequel Pearl a perfect one-two combo. While I personally enjoyed Pearl in its golden era Hollywood nostalgia, 
X is also really great at capturing its 70s style. We could also just name this entry The Mia Goth Show as both films highlight the actress's incredible talent. If the Academy Awards didn't have such a bias against horror, we could easily see Goth earn a nomination for her work in Pearl. In X, where she's playing two roles, this was masterfully done and showed her range as a performer but we had no idea what was in store for us with Pearl. She gave a career best performance, which is equal parts heartbreaking and horrifying. Pearl has one of the most like must-see performances of the year. X delivers an authentic slasher experience way more than Pearl, but it also has a great supporting cast. The craftsmanship that Ty West shows in both these movies shows that he is still doing his best work yet. Number two, Terrifier 2. Terrifier 2 is a true moment for horror in 2022, going from a small indie horror fest to a box office powerhouse. With only a budget of $250,000, Damien Leon's sequel took home nearly $10 million dollars giving its extreme horror nature an obscure horror cult status it's impressive that this little slasher can make it so far many doubted the success but it shows that true horror fans will pick what they want to be hits with terrifier 2 the twisted art the cloud returns for more bloody mayhem as far as slasher sequels go, this could have easily wound up as one of those bad Halloween movies or just one of those weird Friday 13th sequels. So Leon knew exactly how to avoid those lousy sequel tropes and deliver the goods. The kills are somehow more brutal than the previous film. Art is wackier and the film ups the ante with a supernatural edge. It's obvious that this film will not work for everyone. Hell, even I had problems with it. But seeing a smaller film like this get a significant moment in the mainstream is refreshing. From TikTok watching challenges to scaring the local news stations, Terrifier 2 has entered pop culture with brute force. Number 1. Nope At the time of writing, I've seen Nope around four times. While horror is usually a rewatchable genre, there's something about Nope that becomes addictive. You uncover new things each viewing, with certain story elements making more sense as time passes. From the gory murder spree to the epic final confrontation, you get so many great horror moments from a film that bends all of the genres. As we've seen with most Jordan Peele movies, there has been some pushback from the horror community. This takes a page from the Jaws playbook and ditches the horror roots for a more action adventure final act, but the love from the genre never leaves. Peel turned the tired alien horror movie on its head and delivered one of the year's best films regardless of the genre. In one of the year's most notable projects, I mean this was a big mainstream film, a group still doubts the film has horror power. Look, just watch that terrifying scene that happens at Jupe's farm when he invites all those people over and tell me that this isn't a horror film. This is about spectacles and it's a traumatic viewing just like the characters dealt with in this movie. All right, everyone, what is your favorite horror movie of 2022? Let us know down in the comments below. Make sure you guys give us a subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and reach out to our social media channels at Flickering Myth. Thank you so much for joining in. Make sure you leave a comment and let's talk about the horror genre.